Hey guys, welcome back to Planet Mithril. Today, and I have a tutorial again, much requested, the ferocious and cruel general who's a dead eye with a crossbow, Vrasku. A slightly different approach to that of other Urukai heroes I've tackled before, with a few variations of palette and paint scheme to help them stand out on the battlefield whilst maintaining the uniformity of the Isengard legions. As always, my model was prepped, assembled, and undercoated using Citadel Cow's Black Spray. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. Rush is ready, guys, and let's get painting. Base colours. I'm going to start by applying a base coat to the Uruk skin with a three part mix of Doom Ball Brown, Corn Red, and Abaddon Black in a 2 2 1 ratio. This will give me the characteristic rich dark red hue from the films. All the armor plating, the sword on his back, and crossbow blades are given a base coat with a 50-50 mix of Iron Warriors and Abaddon Black. You may have to make several passes with this to get smooth coverage, making sure it's thoroughly mixed together before applying. The main tunic over Frasco's top half and the bolt quiver were base coated with a 4 to 1 ratio mix of Steel Legion Drab and Rhinox Hide. This will just soften the more vibrant hue of the Steel Legion slightly and tie in more with the palette I'm using. The cloth hanging down his waist was given a base coat with a 3 to 1 ratio mix of Rhinox Hide and Mechanica Standard Grey. The addition of the grey here will give the brown a more aged, leathery, worn look when I start progressing through the layers and highlights later on. The large strap holding his blade in place was picked out carefully with a 50-50 mix of Doomball Brown and Rhinox Hide. The hair and remaining straps were base coated with a 50-50 mix of Abaddon Black and Storm Vermin Fur. Again, the Storm Vermin with its very slight brown tint helps complement the leathers and look of the rest of the model. The main body of the crossbow was then base coated using dryad bark, being careful to get around the whole body of the bow by orienting your model in different ways. Finally, the sword strappings and bolt fletchings were carefully picked out using rackard flesh. A rook skin. I started by adding Tuscal fur into the original base coat mix and applying a pre-washed layer all over the skin. Here I'm looking to block out the initial muscle work and features of the face, leaving the original base coat showing in the deepest recesses which will be deepened further by the shading stage. All the skin was then given a shade using diluted Agrax Earth Shade, allowing this to reinforce the blocking stage, heightening the contrast between the recesses and the pre-shade layer stage. Now this is dry, I'm going to continue adding in Tuscal Fur in gradual increments, slowly retracing over my initial blocking layer, defining more musculature and the details of the face and snarl more and more with each pass. I want the tone and look of the skin to feel very natural, blending up from the blocking layer where possible to create a seamless transition from shadow to light. By the time you reach the final layer stage, you should have approximately 50% Tuscal fur to the original base coat mix. When I'm happy with my layering stages and I've built up the skin hue to my satisfaction, I moved on to the highlight stages and started adding in deepkin flesh gradually, again into the overall previous mix. The deepkin has a slightly sickly hue which is rich enough to complement the skin tones but also slightly washes out the reds creating a gnarly, cracked, leathery look. By the time I reach the extreme edge highlight phase, all over the skin, your mix should contain between 40-50% to deepkin flesh overall, depending on how bright you want these upper tones to be. Any more than this and you run the risk of overblowing the tone. At this stage it's simply a case of framing the outer and upper muscles and creating sharpness and cruelness across his gnarly snarl and haggard features. When you're happy with the final look and feel to the Uruk skin, a glaze was applied again using Agrax Earthshade diluted heavily with Lamia Medium being very careful here not to let this pool as much as we can. 
The eye recesses were painted in using Abaddon Black. The pupils and teeth were then carefully picked out using pallid witch flesh. Uruk Armour All the armour and metals were given a heavy shade using a combination mix of Agrax Earth Shade and Athonian Camo Shade. This will give it a rusty aged look ready for the following toning stage. When this is dry and I'm happy with the metal's tone, I apply a heavier shade this time using pure Nulm Oil, trying to keep coverage uniform to maintain a consistent finish all over the silver. Now that I'm happy with my armour's tone and shading, I move directly to the final edge highlight stage, applying an extreme edge highlight around the edges, points, corners and sharpest edges of Uruk armour with a 2 to 1 mix of Lead Belcher and Pallid Witch Flesh. The effect will be very stark, which is exactly what I'm looking for, and the tighter and more controlled you can be with this stage, the meaner, sharper and more authentic the armour will look overall. Jerkin and Cloth The jerkin and quiver were given a thorough shade using Agrax Earthshade, allowing this to sink between the grid patterning over the jerkin, creating natural shadows. A blocking layer was then applied to these areas using a 50-50 mix of Steel Legion Drab and Zemesi Desert. Over the jerkin in particular, I'm focusing on filling in the rectangular patterning, leaving the Agrax Earthshade showing in all the grooves and recesses. Finish building up the layers and framing the jerkin patterning by adding Screaming Skull into the previous mix. This needs to be an approximate 4 to 1 ratio in favour of the layer mix to avoid bringing up the tone too quickly. Continue adding Screaming Skull into the mix and progress through the highlight stages over the jerkin, continuing to frame the patterning, edges of the quiver and enunciate the more prominent features and folds across the leather. Finally, a dot highlight was applied across the jerkin and quiver with pure Screaming Skull, focusing this mainly in the corners of the jerkin's rectangular patterns and the corners and tips of the quiver. When you're happy with this finished look for these areas, the glaze was applied with Seraphim Sepia. This will serve to tile the layers and highlights together, softening the transition between the light and dark areas. A manual shade was then applied to the recessed folds of the waist cloth with a 3 to 1 mix of Rhinox Hide and Abaddon Black to create some initial toning. Followed by an all over shade with Agrax Earth Shade to further push the definition of the recesses shading over the cloth. Once this was dry, a layer was applied over the cloth now with a 2 to 1 mix of the base coat mix and Gawthor Brown, making sure to leave all the shading showing in the deepest recesses to start creating movement and tone over these areas. Gradually starting to work up the highlights by adding Carrack Stone into the overall mix and further defining the outer and more prominent folds of material. By being gradual and careful here, you should start getting a seamless transition from the recessed shading through to these lighter areas. Continue adding Carrack Stone into the mix gradually in as many increments as you feel necessary and continue highlighting up the upper and most visible folds where the light will be hitting most naturally.
Finally, the glaze was applied to all the hanging cloth again using Agrax Earth Shade to tie everything together. Hair and details. The layer was carefully applied to the large strap using Tuscal fur down the length of each side. A fine edge highlight was then applied tightly and sharply with a 2 to 1 mix of Tuscal fur and Pallid Witch Flesh. The remaining straps and the hair were then given a shade using diluted null oil. The concentration of storm vermin fur was brought up to a 3 to 1 ratio with the Abaddon Black for the first post shade layering stage, framing all the remaining straps and segmenting all the details down Vrascu's locks and hairline. A fine edge highlight was applied to the straps now with pure storm vermin fur. This was also applied to the hair itself but applied as a dot highlight to pick out the more prominent areas of hair. The shade was then applied to the fletchings and sword strappings using Agrax Earth Shade. When this was dry, a quick targeted highlight was applied to these areas using Pallid Witch Flesh. The main body of the bolts was picked up using dry up bark. And then given a quick highlight using Gawthor Brown. Another fearsome addition to the legions of Isengard, finished and ready to wreak havoc on the tabletop with crossbow and scimitar alike. The model was based using my 5 minute basis method, the playlist for which can be found on the channel. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video, please like, subscribe and hit that bell, and until next time guys, take care and happy hobbying.